Hello everyone, my name is Fanil. Today we are looking at the styling Streamlit widgets. Warning! There are two official solutions and two hacks that are not encouraged by the dev team. So stick to the end if you want to learn about those secret hacks. You will also need a minimum of HTML, CSS and JavaScript knowledge. Like when I say those words, you know what their purpose is. HTML. This allows you to change the color palette of the whole app. You will find it in the settings page of your app. Or you can configure it through the Streamlit config toml file at the root of your project under the theme section. The thing is, this applies a global color theme to the whole streaming app. You're not able to edit specific widgets in the app. Plus, you only get access to color or text properties. How about if you want rounder edges? So if you want to integrate your own Streamlit widgets, no you can with components. You have the components.html function which displays your HTML, CSS, JS code. Or you can create a bidirectional component that integrates your front-end code with the ability to send back data from JS to Python. This makes it possible to insert JavaScript plotting libraries like eCharts. The thing is, you cannot edit native Streamlit widgets with components, you can only build one from scratch, which may be overkill if you only wanted a button with rounded edges. You will also realize that emulating native widgets behavior like ST button returning true when you click on it, or the more advanced callbacks like on change or on click, are not replicable yet with components. Now that we've talked about the official solutions, let me bring you to a darker territory. The two following techniques revolve around hijacking the Streamlit CSS. This is like jailbreaking your phone, it's not encouraged by the team and it runs the risk of being broken by any Streamlit update. But know that you can do it and this is the way to have full control over the design of your app. Before going there, you'll need a guide, a companion, that will accompany you there. This is the role of your browser dev tools, especially the web inspector tab. Soon enough, you will realize that every streaming widget in your Python code maps to some HTML CSS code in your browser. Using the web inspector on your Streamlit app, you can browse the structure of the app. For example, see that every st.title becomes a h1 tag with a span containing the text. Now that we are here, see that we can replace the text hello world in the inspector and you will see the results live in the app. The more important part though is the element part in the CSS because this is where you can override CSS styles and put for example a, a green background color to your text. Or if you're editing the style of a streamlit button this is where you can put round edges. Now this is nice and it is the best way to look for the HTML tags you need to edit but if you reload your app you, you'll notice that all of the CSS styles disappear appear out of window. Ah! So we need to find a way to edit the CSS styles from inside the Python script. And this is where the method 3 comes in. Using the inspector, you understand how to target a specific element linked to a streamlit widget. For example, the st button call is mapped to a button inside a div with the class st button. You can verify that by applying a background color to the button and not to the div itself. And there is a way to express that with CSS selector, on which you can then apply a set of CSS properties. In this example, I select every button that are inside a div with the CSS class st button and apply a border radius of 50% to get round edges. Now how do I apply this little piece of code inside Streamlit? st.markdown can interpret and apply HTML and CSS code when unsafe allow HTML is set to true. To test it, I can put an h1 tag directly into my markdown. And it also applies CSS styles globally, which is exactly what we want. So let's integrate our CSS selector and properties inside a style tag and then pass it to the st markdown code. And yep, your button is rounder. Now, if you want to get better at CSS selection, I definitely recommend the CSS Diner website because you get to eat food you select through CSS selection and...
Now you should be able to edit almost all of the properties of your Streamlit widgets inside your Streamlit application. But there are some rare cases where CSS selections don't get the job done. For example, if you want to edit the property of elements in a certain container. Also, the CSS hack doesn't allow the use of JavaScript. And to solve this, we've got the fourth and final technique. you remember the components html function from part 2? The frontend code write in components html is embedded in an iframe, so any CSS or JavaScript you write in this only impacts what's inside the iframe, so what you wrote inside the html call. But what if you could escape that prison? Window parent document. Using pure JavaScript, you are able to escape the iframe prison and select all elements containing a certain tag, and then change the style of every element independently. Put this at the end of your Streamlit app so it runs after all widgets have loaded. Those last two techniques are used in the community. But the problem is, it strongly depends on the HTML and CSS structure of your Streamlit app not changing, which you cannot really count on between versions. If you update Streamlit and the developers decide to rename stblock to Streamlit block, then your styling would not work anymore. You'd have to inspect the HTML again to find the correct elements and tags to reapply the properties on. This is it, you know the secret techniques for hijacking your Streamlit style. If you want more of the Streamlit tutorials to get your data science noticed, then leave a like and follow me for more more updates. Happy streaming!